Hi, I thought I would uh, try to find something that might be useful for other people that are RVing and out and about doing the things that they like to do. This here is the new wave oven, the mini version. They also make the larger one, so if you have a larger RV or you have a big family that you're going to try to cook for, you might like that one more than this. This one, I've used it four or five times. One of the times I used it was for one of those tenderloins, you know, pork tenderloins, comes all pre-made and everything. But the cool thing about this is you can cook things that are frozen or you can cook things that are already thawed. So you can also cook like pizza rolls, any, any little thing that you would put in a normal oven, you can put in this. But the cool part is, is being able to do it from frozen and not having to be stuck inside your RV. Um, mine is a smaller Class B RV that only has the two burner propane stovetop. I don't have an oven in mine. And I know there are lots of people out there that also don't have an oven. Or they have one where they're stuck inside and it heats the whole thing up. It's, it's not fun to use an oven when you're RVing a lot of times. Well, this thing, you, if you're at a campground, it's, it's perfect at a campground because you have electricity. You can set it outside. You, you know, you come home, say you're out on the lake or you're out taking pictures or whatever you enjoy doing when you're RVing. You can get something, even if it's still frozen and you weren't prepared for dinner, you pop it in there. Uh, I made that uh, tenderloin. I think it took 30 minutes. They give you a little card that comes with it, you know, that tells you cooking times or everything. You pop it in there. You know, you, you turn it on. You set the power level that you want. The card tells you what your cook time is. You pump that in there and you hit start. I mean, and you're cooking. Then you can go on and do the other things that you need to do. And then usually you have to flip it like halfway. So once the alarm goes telling you it's done, you pick up the handle. They give you a little, little thing down there. And you set the top down in it. You take, you go back, you flip it over. You put it back on. You reset your times. You hit start. And again, you go back to doing whatever else you need to do to get ready to eat, and it's done. A lot of times you see these things on infomercials and stuff. That's how it got me. I was like, uh, I have a little toaster oven. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to use that very often. So I saw this, and I figured, what the heck, the price wasn't too bad, and I got it. So it could work for you. It might be something that you don't like, but to me, I think it's something worth researching, and I... I'm so glad I have it and I use it quite often. Here's what the inside of it looks like if you, if you want to take a look down in there. There's just a fan in there and there's a coil and it blows it around forced air like convection heating. And then on the bottom, this grill pan, you can flip it over, you raise it up or lower it down. I know that the bigger model, the rack is even, you know, stands up even higher because it's a bigger unit. And then Cleaning it up is easy. There's these two little things. You just take the whole thing out and you're left with just the base. If you ever were to use one of these, I would suggest putting foil down in the bottom because once the th stuff that you're cooking drips down on the bottom, it, it can be a little bit tough for cleanup. But if you put a piece of foil over it, you're set. You're good to go. So again, do your own research. Don't take my word for everything, but I highly recommend this. It's a, a good item. Here's another little idea that I had. Um, you might think it's clever. I kind of do. Maybe it's not. Could be for you, could not. What it is is when you're RVing, you're boondocking or something, and you're always worried about power. You're always worried about your batteries getting enough charge. And sometimes at night you need light. So what I did is I went to, I had done another project where I used some plexiglass and I had some left over. So I said, well, I went to the store and I found these are the common little solar lights that you put out in your garden. I got three of them. I honestly paid 88 cents each. They were on sale. And I, then I just cut a hole so that I can hang these. And all that I figured that I need to do is put them either outside to get charged during the day or I can send them in the, in the front of the cab in the window to get some light. Because in my RV, the little Class B, the bathroom, there's no light in there. So at night, it's, it's hard to see. Some people might have kids that are afraid of the dark or something like that. And this gives just enough light that it could calm them down. But what I did is I, I took them apart and I just super glued these to the back of 
the plexiglass. And you can see that two of them I haven't unplugged yet. One of them I went and pulled, and there's power now that I set it down, and it's not getting any light, there's power, you know, once you block the light. So for under $3, I, I made a light that I can use and reuse every day until those rechargeable batteries finally die. Something you might think is, is useful to you. You never know. Here's another gadget. This is a induction cooktop. They got me on the infomercial. I started watching it and it made me think, okay, when you're camping, if you're at a campground, if you want to cook anything on a stovetop, you're stuck using your, your own propane from inside the RV and and I always figure is why spend any extra of my money I'm already paying for the campground I might as well use their electricity which to me makes sense the cool thing about this is you can set it by high medium low all that good stuff or you can set an actual temperature say you want something at 375 and this cooktop will keep it right at that temperature until you unplug it as long as you want it to go there's good sides and bad sides to it. The good side is you have that actual control. It's really cool. Bad side, a little pricey. And the really bad side is you have to have special pots and pans that work on induction. And I find I found those hard to find. I have a couple. And they can be rather expensive. They have to have the bigger heavy bottom. And you have to make sure that it says it's for induction cooking. If I were to do it again, I think I would, and I'm probably going to anyways, just get one of the cheaper um, hot plate kind of cooktops that you can use the regular regular stuff and, and do normal cooking. And so this works. It does everything it's supposed to. But from what I found, I think it's a little pricey and having to worry about the pots and pans makes it a little difficult. So again, do your own research for me. I don't regret it, but if I had to do it over, I would probably just get the normal little hot plate. One more thing I wanted to share. This is actually pretty important, I think. Um, if you're new to RVing or you've done it for a while, you, you realize that RV refrigerators work a little bit different. They work more at taking heat out of a refrigerator than putting it in. So one, it takes them a while to get cold. And two, they have a hard time sometimes keeping things cold. So this is a must in my opinion you have to be sure to have a thermometer inside your refrigerator because the last thing you want to do is you know start eating food that you thought was was safe and cold that's not you can get seriously sick and they don't cost much money so I, I I would recommend everybody have one of those for your own safety and two you have to be careful with an RV like I said the way the refrigerator works that it keeps everything cold. It's important to not just cram stuff in there. You got to give some space. And to help these little these little fans you can buy, they're five six bucks. They're really worth it because you put a battery in there. It's going to last six months probably. I mean, you turn it off when you don't need it. The, your RV refrigerator doesn't work the same way that your home refrigerator does. Like I said, it pulls heat out. Your refrigerator at home, it has fans inside. It gets everything moving. Well, with an RV fridge, it doesn't work that way. So a little fan like this, it's not very big, you put a couple C batteries in most of them, is going to circulate the cool air around all your food. Again, you have to be careful not to overpack them, but I think, I think this is very helpful to keep your food good, and I think the thermometer is like a must. So again, just trying to share some of the gadgets that I found that make RVing a little bit easier. Um, make it a, a lot more fun for us to all get out and do the things we want to do. Uh, as always, do your own research, but hopefully some of these products and some of these things I'm sharing are, are helpful to some people out there. And just get out and do it. I mean, go have, go have the great times that are meant to be had.